Hi, brother teacher here. Have you ever been in a relationship with a spouse, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the arrangement is, and your spouse cheated on you with someone else? Have you experienced this? If so, how did you deal with it? How did it affect you? Did you continue in the relationship? Or did you end the relationship? So this is the question today. What should you do if your spouse is unfaithful to you and they cheat. First of all, let me preface this by saying this. In a perfect world, we all, I would hope, want to believe that we have the same motivation, the same love and consideration towards one another when we begin a relationship but all too often we don't consider these things sometimes and more so than not we hurriedly enter into relationships without really truly getting to know the other individual or one another and this can be very damaging down the road in a perfect world. I remember back in the day uh, people used the term more frequently it seemed to me then was uh, dating someone. Now I have my viewpoint on dating. I believe when we talk about dating we're only talking about dating one person, one individual that you could potentially spend the rest of your life with. That is why you're dating that individual. Not dating from the standpoint of many people today who jump from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person dating when all they're really doing is just having casual sex. No real attachment, not looking for any meaningful relationship, but they're just jumping around from pillow to post as my mom used to say but anyway as I said in the perfect world we would hope that we do the first thing first and that is to get to know the other individual and by doing so by getting to know the other individual and know them well enough before we venture out into a true relationship we can determine whether or not they are a good fit for us. We all have been damaged in our lives by some means and oftentimes people carry their baggage into their relationships. Now carrying it in the relationship to mean you're wearing it on your sleeve. You are judging and basing your relationship on that new partner or spouse on how the other individual was that you dealt with before in your prior relationship. That's not right. That's not fair to your new partner. We are all different. We have some similarities, but there's no way in the world you can compare two people to one another and they have no dealings with one another and you don't even have any real sound evidence to prove that they are that other individual or like that other individual. I hope I put that plain enough. But anyway, if you dated someone a year or two ago and you're in a present relationship or a potential relationship, it's not the person that you dealt with before. So you need to stop judging the new relationship by the old relationship or relationships that's one thing that you should stop doing because that's going to affect the future 
of you and the other person that you're with now. Now, uh, let's assume that what I'm talking about in this particular uh, video about what should you do if your spouse cheats. Let's assume that you entered the relationship uh, without getting to know one another. Let's assume that that's the issue. And let's assume that it's not uh, the type of relationship where you did get to know one another very well and that you had some very good connection, as it were. So let's say it's the other one. You didn't do all of the first things first court the individual, go out to dinner, go out to a movie, have real life conversations, what your uh, feelings are about, let's say religion, let's say government, let's say family, let's say money, let's say uh, working, let's say ethics in general. If you haven't done all of those things, then chances are that's one of the reasons that your spouse has cheated on you. Can we say immaturity? Not mature. Did you get together when uh, you were too young? That could be a reason. Did you get together for solely the reasons of appearance and not what the individual had in their head? their intellect. Some say content of character. Did you get together for just physical attraction only? Then that could be a reason. Those could be reasons why your spouse cheated on you. Have you spent enough time having quality conversations about life, you and her? him and you. Have you done those things? If you did not and have not, that could be the reason your spouse cheated on you or is cheating for some of you because you may still be in a relationship with that individual. If you work too much and you don't spend enough time with your spouse, and I'm talking about quality time, if you don't talk to one another enough, if you don't sit and have common everyday conversations and have meals together, as opposed to one being in one room eating and the other one in another room eating, that lack of attention to one another could be the reason your spouse has cheated on you or is cheating again. Now, this video could be really long, but I'm going to cut to the chase. And this is the best way that I can put it right now. I may come back in another video in the future and do a similar video uh, depending on how the tides move me. I may articulate the video differently, saying the same thing, maybe with better understanding. But right now, this is what it is. We must understand that before we even enter into a relationship, we have to establish the groundwork. We must get to know one another on more than a physical level. We must, we must know what's going on in that other vigil, individual's mind as it relates to life, as it relates to family, finances, religion, everything. All of the fundamental and the staple things that make a human being whole and complete. You have to make those things plain with that potential future relationship that part you do and if you have not established the groundwork your relationship is doomed 
It is. It really is. Unfortunately, many of us have the testimony that we did not establish that groundwork. And our husband left us or cheated, the boyfriend cheated, or the wife left you and your wife uh, cheated, your girlfriend cheated, your significant other, whoever they are, they cheated. People don't do things for no reason, ladies and gentlemen. They don't. There are manifold reasons. There's a plethora of reasons why people cheat. Now, there's no such thing as it just happened. That's old. That's an old excuse. It just happened. Oh, we were somewhere talking and uh, the next thing you know, it happened. Or he kissed me and the next thing you know, I did this. Or she hugged me and the next thing you know, I did this. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Something led up to that. And in most instances, it wasn't spontaneous. It was something that was carefully thought out over time. Women think, I, women, I'm saying women, I've experienced this. They plan things out over time. And when they jump in the bed with another man, unbeknownst to you, the husband or the boyfriend, they didn't do it just off the cuff. They had been talking to one another over a period of time. And then that was the end result they had been building up to it having conversations if they work together they've been talking on lunch texting one another having secret phone calls that you were not aware of meeting on days or weekends when you thought that she was over a family member's house or somewhere else with a girlfriend and that's where she was you may have even thought she was at work and she was off that day and she spent all of that time with this other guy same thing is true with the men so now what I think is the best case scenario when someone has cheated on their partner this is so hard but the best case scenario is to own up to it. It's going to be painful to the other individual anyway. Regardless. It's going to be painful when you tell them that you cheated. But when you don't tell them that you cheated, it's going to be even more painful because Therein lies deceit, deception, and even though the act was dishonest, it is even more deplorable to not tell the other individual and to have them find out on their own or even by accident or to be told by someone else. You see, once you cheat, your partner knows you. If they've been with you for a period of time, they know you. We don't walk around with a journal or a book, necessarily. But there are certain habits that we have, certain behaviors and mannerisms that we have when we've been with someone for a while. And when those things change, you pick up on it. You may not want to except what you think you're seeing but usually in most instances what you see is what you actually see now when you have some idea that maybe your partner is doing something that's not honorable you really should 
subtly, not out of anger. Whisper to them, what's going on? I noticed this about you, or this particular thing about you has changed, or seemingly changed. Is there something you need to talk about or we need to talk about? That's what you should do. But oftentimes, in fear of accepting the possibility that your partner could be cheating, we won't say anything at all. And we will continue on in the relationship just because it bears, for the most part, seemingly uh, more normality than it does abnormality as far as behavior is concerned. It seems to be going along smoothly with the exception of those subtle things that you've noticed in your partner. But over a period of time in the relationship if that partner is still cheating you will begin to see even more uh, hints that they may be doing something behind your back. But now I'm not going to stay here long like I said. Let me just cut to the chase. I want to forewarn you, everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice right now, I want to forewarn you from a man that has gone through a relationship where someone cheated on me in, a, in the past and I want to say this to you all of you who are in relationships now or just starting relationships especially get to know the individual before you know them I'm going to say it again and I'll clarify get to know the individual first know about them not aesthetically what you see on the outside you know not the the screen shot not them putting up this image of how they want you to see them not knowing them that way I mean don't pull out a magnifying glass and look at them real hard not like that but use your mind that beautiful gift that God has given all of us use your mind and think and observe subtly throughout your dealings observe the individual the things that they say how they respond to your questions and conversation that you may have with one another mannerisms and behaviors even around the opposite sex get to know them before you know them now the second no means before you go to bed before you give them of yourself get to know them first Now you heard me say that you must get to know them, right? So now, let me answer your question. The question that I'm posing to you. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not suggesting that anyone, specifically anyone, leave your partner. But it depends on your specific and particular situation and it varies relationship to relationship okay so this is your judgment call not brother teachers but I'm going to give you the real simple honest answer when you're in a relationship ladies and gentlemen there are certain codes that must be adhered to certain laws natural laws that must be adhered to first of all if you're in a relationship with someone you must respect one another it goes without saying we throw that word around respect loosely because we hear it so often but very rarely do people understand what respect entitles 
or entails. Respecting, which is giving your partner a place where they are just as important as you. Let's put it that way. Giving your partner space, and I don't mean physical space away from you. I'm not talking about that. That's kind of ludicrous. Space. My, let's use me hypothetically. My wife uh, should be able to go into another room and read a book on her own without me cramping her style. She should be able to go out with her girlfriends and have fun and come back home or over a family member's house. She should be able to go with her girlfriend swimming or uh, to a concert or what have you. That's giving her her space. I should be able to hang with the guys and I don't do that but I'm saying if I wanted to do that I should be able to do that and I should be able to go out for a jog a run go to the gym or work out and come back home without us always being hugged up on each other that's giving one another their space even though we can read the Bible uh, as a family she should be able to have her space to do that and I should be able to have my space to do that and have my own time where I can pray alone as well as pray with her and the family the children giving one another space but what is, is equally valuable too is also coming together when it's time to come together. As I said earlier about eating uh, your meals together as a family, as a couple. You should do that because that's important. But learn the difference in what I'm saying. I don't have to jump in the shower with my wife when she takes a shower. She should be able to have her space when she takes a shower. Every once in a while we might want to be able to do that. And that's cool. But I don't want to crowd her space because we're still individuals. Okay? Now, that's one thing that we have to do in a relationship. And allow your partner to have their own opinion or viewpoint as well. Without you being overly demanding or overly commanding about your stance. No, I'm right. And what you're saying is wrong. No, allow them to have that space because sometimes we can turn people away by being too overbearing. Because we think, I've heard this expression before, we think we know it all. No one knows it all. Okay, now, Whatever happens or has happened that causes the other spouse to feel as though that they have to be deceptive and dishonest and immoral and attach themselves to another person sexually. It's no good reason. It is better that that individual come to you and say, "May I have a conversation with you? May I talk with you for a moment?" This is on. This has been on my mind. But this is difficult for a lot of people to do this because it would be exposing their heart to a great degree. Don't forget all of the things that I said before. There should be prerequisites before you even hook up with someone. Groundwork. Remember me saying that? The foundation has to be laid first before you venture off into a relationship. Now, if your partner cheats, leave them. That is perhaps the greatest sin in a so-called committed relationship. I say so-called. You thought that it was committed. But when they cheat, it's so-called. 
that is a violation of your trust. That is betrayal. Because that individual basically turned against you. And what makes it even worse is when they won't tell you about their indiscretions and about their sins. Leaving you to only imagine what happened, who it happened with, where, where it happened, and why it happened. And they won't give you any information. But it's apparent, it's obvious that they cheated. And sometimes, especially with women, they would rather you leave home than for them to face you and tell you the honest truth about what happened and who they did it with. It's true with men as well. So again, I'm gonna say this. And as I said a moment ago, I'm not telling any individual to leave your spouse or your relationship. But I am saying this to you. If your partner your spouse cheats on you that is your permission to leave them you have permission now you have a right to leave them now if you are male or female man or woman and you feel like you're bound together because of economical reasons then you need to figure out a plan. You do. Figure out a plan of departure. It may not happen in a month. If you don't have the ability to move then, it may not happen in six months. It may happen in a year. But have a plan of departure. Because you don't need to be in that relationship anymore. Now, be strong if this is your decision to leave, that is. Be strong. Don't go parading around the fact that you have decided to leave them. Because that other partner can even make the rest of your existence with them in that relationship. They can make it miserable for you. And they will do that. The partner that is guilty of the crime, listen to me, the partner that is guilty of the crime, if you tell them that you're leaving, did you not know that they can turn on you and that they will turn on you and that they will make your life a living hell for as long as you are there and try to make you come out of your character? To make you even more miserable because they realize that what they have done is unreconcilable with you and they feel as though that they are going to be abandoned but guess what that's karma that's a natural law you have a right to leave if your partner commits adultery or fornication no one deserves to be in a relationship where your partner doesn't love you the way that you love them. That's what I had to say. If your partner cheats on you, they don't love you. There are no two versions of love, or three or four or a dozen. There's only one love. Love carries with it traits. Love carries with it characteristics. One of those characteristics is not cheating. It's not. That's betrayal again. And when you betray your partner in a relationship, all bets are off. There are some and I know some personally where the man or the woman has cheated on the other partner and they chose to try to work it out and remain 
in the relationship. And it seems to have worked out to some degree uh, with the people that I've talked to, that I've known personally, and other people whose relationships I've, I've heard about, but doesn't always work that way. Now, one thing I can't say, I just absolutely cannot say this, you cannot call it an accident. It was an accident. You cannot say uh, even it was a mistake. You may have had an emotional moment because of an argument that you may have had with your partner and you sought refuge or consolation from somebody else and you fell into the arms of, of that individual and then you became sexually intimate. That's not a reason. And I'm speaking from both sides. It's not a reason for the woman, nor is it a reason for the man to commit that act against their relationship with their current partner or spouse. There's no reason. I'm sorry. This is the brass tacks. This is where the rubber meets the road. If your partner cheats on you, you can keep them. But you'll never be the same. Not if you're a real man. And not if you're a real woman. You'll never be the same. Because that is a hurt. And that is a pain. That you carry for a long time. Especially. You gotta say this. I have to qualify this. I say this is a pain that you have for a long time. Now. If you're someone who wasn't committed in a relationship in the first place, you're not going to carry that for a long time. On both partner sides, if neither one of you were fully committed, what I'm about to say doesn't apply. But if you were vested in your relationship and your partner cheated on you, that's a pain then that you carry for a long time. Because betrayal and deceit cuts it cuts really really deep and it is hard you can recover but it's hard to recover if you've experienced this love yourself ladies and gentlemen and move on love yourself and move on it's going to be a challenge it's not going to be easy to uproot yourself from that relationship that you already had some sort of ties with this other person. You've got history. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy. It's not. It wasn't easy for me. It was probably the most difficult time that I have ever had in my life. And that's even with people that were close to me that had passed away, it was the worst experience. That was, can't speak for you or anyone else. So, again, before I leave, and I'm gonna stand on this, you make your own decision. Ladies, you make your own decision if, if you have experienced this or if you're going through this, and men, if you have experiences or you're going through this, you make your own decisions. But I'm telling you, brother teacher's telling you this, Reginald. If your partner cheats on you, leave them. That's it. And that's all. You don't deserve it. You deserve better. Yahweh loves you. And I love you. So long.